Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Brian, and today is Monday, July 8th, 2024, and this is episode two, uh, 736 of the Lost Project podcast, and today's episode is titled The Tent in the Woods. I'll be chatting about our weekend project, a couple interesting questions I came up with, and a little bit more. First, let's grab a cup of coffee, see who's hanging out in the in live stream chat. Hanging out in the coffee crew. Sorry about that. Sorry about um, the the confusion here. It looks like I'm not being I'm not able to send a message to the YouTube comments. You see him? Uh, you see in my good morning message in the YouTube comments? Anybody out there? Um. Hello. <laughs> Let me see if it'll go. Um. Yeah, uh, when uh, when StreamYard starts throwing up weird messages, it gets me a little distracted. It uh, looks like that one went through. Looks like that one went through. So we'll get going here. Uh, anyway, let's see who's hanging out over in the live chat and uh, and roll with it. Good morning, K Bonk in early. Good morning with that. Uh, good morning, Real Wilder Life. She says, not sure how I managed to skip ads this morning. Oh man, did I not turn that on? Huh. Uh, Pip says next up the manifesto. Yeah, I got tent in the woods. I got a shed in the woods. Next, we need a little um, eight by eight cabin in the woods and start start authoring, start penning that manifesto. Thanks for uh, thanks for confirming. You can see that, Rachel. Um, let me see what's going on. Man, Streamyard's kind of wonky this morning. I don't know. Okay, that's good over there. Short feeds good. These are all good, huh? Anyway, let's go. How was everybody's weekend? Hope it would. Hope everything went well. Sipping on a little Opti blend this morning. That's the uh, that's the special blend Brian sent out. Is another white label blend that uh, that he came up with for a friend of his. That's in the C4 Club. What is the C4 Club? The C4 Club is a coffee club and more. It's a month commitment of two pounds minimum of coffee going to uh going to um or coming from food forest farms excuse me uh you go in and you pay monthly he sends you two pounds of coffee and the price you can't beat it it is a super low price 20 bucks a pound for the premium um for the premium uh air roasted coffee that he's coming up with uh hand hand roasted by a real human in micro batches uh it's fantastic he works with you to to determine what your tastes are what your particular tastes are in coffee light roast dark roast medium roast try it um figure it out uh and he gets you what you want every month sends it out the middle of the month every month and uh man it is one of the my favorite packages to get on a monthly basis, on a monthly basis, I could not, um, I could not, <laughs> Mike's Homestead says, I could not find the stream, had to search it first time for that. Something's going, something's a little wonky this morning. Something is a little wonky. I'm not sure what's going on, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. Everything might come crashing down. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, Brian over there is uh, is filling up his club. He has uh, he has 100 total seats available. Uh, not anymore. Uh, at the beginning, when he came up with the idea, he had 100 total seats. He has a few left. When he does, uh, when he reaches that 100, the man is going to stop making coffee for the public and only make it for his club members. And if you want to get it after that, you're going to have to go through a club member. And who knows what the club member is going to charge? Charge whatever we want. Could charge whatever we want. So definitely check it out now. See if it's something you like. See if you want to get in on the coffee club, on the C4 club. There is are a ton of other benefits. I'm just going to refer to the coffee here. Get a hold of Brian at foodforestfarms.com, foodforestfarms.com. Good morning, Kinsley Farrar over there in the vertical feed. Appreciate you hanging out. Hit that like and sub if you would. I appreciate that. Um yeah, this Opti blend is fantastic. Brian said he made it up for a, a friend of his that used to be a DJ, and uh, his his stage name was DJ Optimistic. 
Optimistic, and he made him a couple of blends, one called the Opti Blend. He did share with me the secret recipe, and I can't I can't divulge that. I have uh, I have confidentiality uh, clauses on my side. Can't can't mention what's in it. But man, it is uh, it is good. It's more of a medium roast. He uh, he snuck one in on me. He's he said he thought he got me. I'm, I enjoy a medium every now and then. I just prefer a light. But thanks, Brian, for sending it out. I really like it. And then the Mystic Blend that he came up with for him is actually a half calf um with a darker and a lighter rose so something to check out or you can check out all the the lots project blends there at food forest farms and you can grab uh 10 off uh 10 off with coupon code lots 10 l-o-t-s one zero at foodforestfarms.com or five percent if you've already used that one time 10 percent coupon you can get all um, five percent off any day all the time forever with lots five uh, Ashan, what are you saying over there? Hello, what's LOTS? LOTS stands for Living Outside the System, uh, amongst another, uh, a bunch of other things. Jed Cummings, thanks for stopping in. Just a box. Hey, man, how you doing? Um, Jed says I look like his dad. Interesting. Guys, over there in, that, uh, in the shorts feed, if you hit that like and the sub, I appreciate it very much. Anyway... It's Monday. Got to go over. Uh, Got to go over a few things from the weekend. Uh, first thing will be, I think we'll talk about is our shopping trip on the on Friday. Um, talk to you guys uh, Friday morning before we um, before we took off for our shopping trip. Corey was off from work, and uh, she accompanied me on the the trip to the big city to do laundry, run errands, get groceries, and all of that. And I was bemoaning the fact that I was going to have to walk around the grocery store and, um, yeah, get stuff that wasn't on the list. Jed Cummings says, it's in my beard. What's in my beard? <laughs> Appreciate <it. laughs> um, Anyway, we're over. Um, hey, man, just a box. Thanks. Um, thanks for the five bucks. I appreciate that. Appreciate that for sure. Um <sighs> So we headed, uh, we headed down to, to the city. I was worried. I was worried that we were going to, um, it was going to be, it was going to be a, a interesting day. Um, I explained it to, to you guys, I think, and, uh, and Corey, I've talked to her about it a few times, but what, um, what, it, the way I look at it, and and I explained it to her, and and, and she knows that it's just uh, I love spending time with her. I abs I absolutely love it. We we got to spend most of the weekend together, um, and then uh, the shopping trip. <laughs> K box says, "How big is the big city? Not very big, not very big. Uh, big enough to have a Walmart and a Lowe's, but no Home Depot or Target." Big enough to have a, a Piggly Wiggly and a Kroger, but uh, that's about it. They do have several tattoo shops. <laughs> several tattoo shops. I'm not sure what the population. Let me uh, let me look real quick. Um, but anyway, we went down there, and I look at those trips as as like my, one of my jobs, as um, not as necessarily as an employee, but as work. Um, and so. I told her, you know, it, it's not uncommon for uh, it, it shouldn't be a surprise that I uh, that I get a little flustered. I said, can you imagine if I went to work with you one day randomly and I was just like, hey, um, let's do it this way or changed up her routine. And she she gets it. She gets it. She thinks it's a little. She it's a little over the top and and I know why she wants to look around the stores and enjoy it and be out and see what's available because she makes she does make the she does make the grocery list blind back here when uh, when she's making it she hasn't been in the store in a while I do tell her that the app has everything that's in the store she can go on the app and actually make the list on there and all I have to do is pick it up but um, yeah no I, I I don't mind the shopping I don't mind the challenge the challenge of the shopping uh, Savannah, Tennessee population in 2024 was 7,343 K bonk. Um, so going to the big city is, uh, the big city is about 7,000 people, 7,000. <laughs> That's the big city. Uh, so we took off, we went down, 
Uh, we hit up Lowe's first, and she she gave me a bunch of crap because um, she gave me a bunch of crap because I was doing this. I'm doing this uh, this this gutter project that I want to do um, on the on the shed. So I was at Lowe's. And I was trying to wrap my head around what I actually wanted to do. And I had to visualize it. So we went, um, thanks, Jed. <laughs> Jed doesn't have any money. Uh, man, that's that's cool. I just appreciate you hanging out. Um, I appreciate you hanging out and uh, hitting that like and sub. Uh, <laughs> how much to permanently borrow my beard? Um, no. Uh, so we're in Lowe's and we, we grabbed the stuff that we needed. We just needed a few things. And then I wanted to go over into the plumbing section and start looking at PVC pipe for this project and kind of walk through the whole thing in my head and just get some ideas to think about it uh, and to start picturing it. And so we spent some time in the, in the PVC pipe aisle and she's like, you're spending way too much time here. Spending way too much time. You're, um, this is like me at the grocery store. You're, you're, you're just, you're, you're spending way too much time. So she's busting my balls a little bit. I, I kind of wrap my head around, um, I wrap my head around what I wanted to do there. We went over to Walmart. Looks like I'm getting a little glitchy too. Interesting. I uh, went over to Walmart and, um, and started getting, getting a bunch of stuff. And a bunch of stuff. We we picked up the stuff that we had on our list. It went very smooth. Um, Mike's home says said no prices of PVC are ridiculous. I don't need that much. I don't need that much. Um, and I don't have a way. The gutter project. I don't really have a way to attach gutters to this, like traditional gutters using gutter hangers and all of that. Um, I think it's going to work. I think, I think it's going to work. We'll see. We'll see. It's only, it's like, um, I'm only using two inch and, uh, and one inch and a few fittings. So it, it shouldn't be horribly priced. Maybe, maybe in line with the gutters, uh, after I get through with all the, the dicking around with all the fittings and messing with it and, and, um, and retrofitting hangers and, and yeah. I was looking at gutters and and trying to figure out how to how to work that, and this just seemed to be a better way to try it out. Uh, so we went to Walmart. Walmart went really smooth. We went through there. There wasn't any any super uh, super shit show that at at, uh, at Walmart, but we uh, we got through there. We went to the laundry mat. Um, it was it was interesting. Corey just kind of ducked out of the way and let me do let me do my thing at the laundry mat. She's just, she's like, I don't, I don't even need to deal with him being, being a dickhead at the, at the laundry mat. So she did let me do my thing. Uh, we rolled through laundry and then we headed to the grocery store and the grocery store is, is kind of the, uh, uh Corey's Achilles heel. She, she really wants to, she wants to see the variety of, of, of groceries there and, and pick through things. And I, I'm, I'm coming around to the idea. I'm, I'm, I'm easing into it i'm easing into it um mm, mike's home says it's 325 dollars on 30 foot of three inches three inches way expensive three inches more expensive than four inch did you know that from what i from what i saw on the shelf i believe that the three inch was more expensive or the same price as the as the four inch just, a, just, just an observation that that kind of threw me for a loop. So I, I was glad that I was down in that two inch range for this project. I don't know necessarily about uh, about the other projects, but uh, I calculated out. So what I did to figure out what size pipe I wanted, I calculated out how much rain. <clears throat> First, I was guessing how much, how much, um, how much rain coming off the roof so this is this is the the mental gymnastics i had to go through how much rain is coming off the roof per minute guessing that if it rained for one minute the pipe would fill up and drain if it rained for two minutes the pipe would drain 
at a rate less than it was filling up for the minute. So I, I calculated the, the amount of rain per inch coming off the roof at like, it was at like 34 gallons per inch off the roof, that tiny shed. And then I was calculating out how much water a two inch, 12 foot long pipe, um, a two inch, two inch, 12 foot long pipe could hold if it was sealed. And then I also calculated the flow rate of a two inch pipe, like how much water per minute, how many gallons per minute uh, a two inch pipe can handle. And then, then kind of halved it a little bit because it won't be a, a complete two inch pipe. It'll actually, the roof will go, here's the pipe, the roof will go in the top of the pipe and it'll run down the bottom. Good morning, you know, Om, Omkar. How we doing? Thanks for stopping in. Appreciate that. Um, so all the calculations I came up with, two inch should handle everything, everything up to a deluge of rain, and even down to one inch as it's um, as it's it's rolling off. Hunter says one one six two three. What what is that? What is that? One one six two three. Um, is that a code? Are you sending me code? <laughs> I um, so all the calculations. I think unless I'm getting more than an inch a minute, which is just like an inch a minute of rain. I don't think I really need to worry about my gutters. <laughs> Hunter's blinking really fast. Jed Cummings is mass. Yeah, well, here's the thing. You know what's really handy for figuring this shit out? You know what's really handy? AI. You guys are all wondering, oh, what, what could we use AI for? Oh, it's, it's so dangerous. It's going to take over the world. You know what it's really good at? When I say, hey, how much rain, how much water can fit in a 12-foot long, 2-inch diameter PVC pipe? Schedule 40. Specifying to Schedule 40, which will, which will take into account the thickness of the walls which would change the interior diameter and how much water it could hold. Um, so <laughs> I just, I just asked it questions and not only did it spit out the answers and this was the cool part. So I wanted to figure out kind of what rain catch we're going to have off our shed, off our, off our cabin roof, what size gutters, what size, uh, what size storage. And I was just asking ChatGPT, I was like, well, what, how much rain would come off per inch off a, 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 a 12 by 5? We got a 10 by 12 shed, but it's pitched, so half of it's 5. 5 foot wide, 12 foot long. And it, it calculated out and it showed me the work, explained all the process to get through it. And um, K-Bong says vertical versus horizontal is different. As far as flow rate in the gutter, yeah, I know. You mean like pitch? Like if it's just dropping through a pipe as opposed to running through a pipe? Um, or are you talking about the vertical versus the horizontal feed? <laughs> but asking ChatGPT, it like laid out the whole process for figuring out the, the equation and the numbers and why and how and and we did this and this, we calculated this, and this is the process to do this, and this is the answer we got, and then we use it for this part of the problem. And it gets to the end and it says it spits out the answer. Well, then I was curious what what was gonna come off the cabin. Wow, we are really gl glitchy. Uh, what was gonna come off the cabin? And I just said, hey, how about, how about doing the same calculations for this size roof? I don't need the explanation, just the answer. And it just popped the answer out. So I was just, I was going through the motions of this whole project, just asking ChatGPT answer questions and getting answers. And the amount of, the amount of um, 
excess flow that I'd be able to catch with the two inch. It this the shed's tiny. Like I said, it's twelve foot long, five foot width on that that section of roof I'm catching from. Two of them coming down, and then I'm gonna plumb them together and take them into a tote. It's a total of 75 gallons or just under 75 gallons per inch of rain that I'm going to catch. So it isn't a ton of water. Um, I was also worried about weight. Um, water weighs over eight pounds a gallon. Um, over eight pounds a gallon. So if that if that pipe is full, how much is that? How much weight is is pulling off that roof? So I had to come up with ideas for attaching the pipe. Uh, I'm going to use some screws through the top and then use uh, my, my fav one of my favorite accessories, is like metal strapping. Um, it comes in a roll. It's got holes, different size holes at different size uh, intervals. And, ju and just hang that up there and support it on the roof and basically take it. The plan is, since it's longer than 10 feet, I have to use more than one piece. So I'm going to take uh, probably about six mm, you know mm, have these somewhere in the middle uh just planning out my pieces so i have enough for both sides and i'm gonna put a coupler in the middle i'm gonna i'm gonna put it all together and probably dry fit it i'm guessing probably well i'll put i'll put an end cap on i'll put the coupler in i'll i'll, I'll glue those in and then dry fit the um dry fit the the elbow on the one end and then i'm gonna i'm gonna mark lines across the length of it three quarters of an inch apart all the way down and use an angle grinder or a um dremel or whatever whatever i can scrounge up out of my tools that i have left here and then uh rip lines down and take out a three quarter inch chunk of the pipe it should be held together by the tension of the, the two end pieces and the coupler being glued into place um, and cut just a slot out of the two inch pipe. I've done it before on other projects. It is, it, it, it gets kind of wonky trying to get the line straight, trying to get the, to, to um, zip that line straight, to cut it straight, but I think it'll be all right. It doesn't have to be perfect for this project. But it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if it works. Then, uh, then we'll plumb that over. Anyway, so that's um, that was my that's my gutter project um, to come hopefully later this week. I'm gonna miss the rain. Gonna miss the rain from the the tropical storm or whatever it is coming up here. Um, we're only supposed to get a couple inches anyway, so mm, it is it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, got to paint the PVC, keep it from getting brittle because you put PVC out in the sun and it's going to get brittle and then one big rain and it might crack. I don't know, but, uh, plan on just painting it. Um, you guys ever painted PVC? Basically you, um, basically you, um, you scrub it with uh, 200 grit. 200 grit or more sandpaper and hit it with acetone and uh, then it should adhere with just even spray paint so that's the plan that's the plan that that hopefully comes together pretty quick um and so then Corey and i went over to the grocery store i was worried i was worried um have a little thing about getting stuff that's not on the list uh that's my that is my go-to. I have to get everything on the list and nothing that's not on the list. Otherwise, I'll go sideways doing grocery shopping. It's a way to stay on uh, stay on task for me when I'm there by myself. It's a way to, to organize that trip in my head. It's a way to keep me from buying um, piles of candy and chips and sodas and all of that stuff. If it's on the list, I get it. If it's not on the list, I don't get it. If there's something that I think that should be on the list, I, I message, I message Corey and say, "Hey, do we need this? Um, this is a safety valve for me. It's not on the list. Don't get it. Don't get ice cream. Don't get candy. Don't get potato chips. Don't get all that shit that I'm not supposed to eat. Um, that's me. That's that's for me. Uh, so when I go to the store and Corey comes along. 
we bring a list but a lot of the times like i've mentioned she she likes to browse in the store and i'm becoming more comfortable with it this this trip i, I just wanted to um let her do her thing i was trying it was very hard for weeks for weeks on end i grocery shop by myself by the list i know where everything is we we get relatively the same thing every week if not the same thing every week i know where they are i i, I zip through the store i'm done i'm in i'm out and it's over with um we walked into kroger and I grab a cart and we walk in and, and in this Kroger, when you walk in, all your fresh food is right there at the beginning. And uh, Corey had gone in and she she's got the list. I, I gave I gave away all control. I said, you take the list, you put the stuff, you pick the stuff out. I'll just I'll, I'll take the cart and we'll roll with it. I walk in the door into the store and she she says, Hey, do you want some fresh asparagus? We're having steaks. And I said, is it on the list? She said, nope. <laughs> I said, okay, whatever you want, sweetheart. Whatever you want. First thing in the cart wasn't on the list. First thing on the cart, in the cart was not on the list. It was okay. It went okay. Um, hey, John Palmer, how we doing? Good morning to you also. Uh, it, it went okay. The, the ship, the, the, the trip went, the shopping went okay. It didn't take forever long. Uh, we didn't go up and down every aisle when we, uh, when we left, she was saying that there were, there were some aisles that she wished she had gotten, uh, gotten to go down, but, um, I don't know. I, I think we went down, uh, the majority of the aisles with stuff that we would have bought for groceries. So. I think it went well. Corey, what do you think? Did it go well on Friday? It was okay. She says it was okay. So better than it could have been for sure. Um, so that was Friday. Uh, we came home. We got to spend, the, spend, the, uh, spend time with Corey uh, for two days there while she was off of work and then into the weekend. Um, the weekend, our project our project to do list basically was to get our uh, our our tarp garage. I really don't know what to call it. Um, I looked at the I looked at the, the the Amazon listing. So we bought this off of Amazon a while ago, um, and it's called a heavy duty carport. Well, we're not going to have a car up there. There's no, there's no car, not, well, at least not for a while, <laughs> not for a while. There's going to be a car there. So I don't know if I can necessarily call it a carport. Uh, so I've been calling it a garage. It's uh, basically one of the, here, I can show you uh, if you're watching the, the, the horizontal feed, I'm going to pop it up. But basically it's, um, it's a, it's a can, or not canvas, a tarped, um, tar uh, pipe frame tarped carport garage type system um it it was really nice it was it was super affordable price wise uh full price is uh full price is 299 i believe and right now it's on sale for 279 um it's not it's not bad it's it's definitely not a bad deal when we, uh, I had to go out on Saturday, I had to clear up a bunch of area to get, um, I had one last tree to drop or two, last, two, two ish trees to drop that I wanted them out of the way, uh, for when we put this up one, because one was in the way. The other was because I didn't want to drop that tree after we had the garage up because it would probably end up, it would probably end up dropping right on the garage. So I had to go out on Saturday. I had to I had to drop some trees. Uh, it was actually one of the largest trees that I had to drop since we were uh, since we've been clearing the site. Uh, here I'm going to throw the link for that up in the, the both the chats here. Hey, good morning, Pip and I. Thanks for stopping over on Noster. Appreciate that. Um, I, I threw the Amazon link for the for the garage I'm talking about in both chats. Um, K Box says impressed with that carport. I was super impressed. Uh, I got the I got the trees knocked down, so I'm I'm excited to say we have 
I think I counted four more to drop. Nothing huge, nothing significant, nothing, um, nothing that's, um, nothing that's, uh, I, I'm not thinking super dangerous. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not, um, going to not pay attention by any means for sure. But, um, I got the biggest, bigger trees drop and the biggest one on Saturday. And I started bucking them up. I had to uh, get them out of the way where we we're going to put this carport up because it's 12 foot by 20 foot long, uh, 12 foot wide by 20 foot long. You can see in the picture, if you're on the horizontal feed that it's got, um, man, it's got doors on all four sides. So the big door you can see in the picture, it's, it's that, and then it's mirrored on the back. And then on the sides, it's got in the center, it's got um, doors that roll up. And then it's got windows, two windows on each of the sides, too, that the they um, roll up. They roll up. Um, the windows roll up and there's screens. So you literally could zip it all closed and have a screened in window. k -Bonk was wondering how big the, the opening is from the from the the bottom to the top of the flat so i have to assume i have to assume that's the height approximately the opening is about six and a half feet um and that's about right because i can walk in it i i had no problem i'm six four pushing six five depending on what boots i have on um and i can walk into it without ducking my head through the doors so that's convenient I was surprised how big it was when we got it up, um, but it's nine foot tall or something at the, at the peak. It's um, it's significant for sure. I um, I was impressed. Yeah, nine point three eight feet tall to the peak from the ground, twelve foot wide, twenty foot long, and the 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 normal sides before the peak, the wall sides are. Too small for a sprinter. Yeah, I I would. Um, yeah, yeah. I mm, mm -hmm. unless you um, unless you dug out the, a channel in to to drive into, you'd be you'd be kind of tight on the sprinter for sure. Uh, so it went up super easy. I was I was impressed on how easy it went together. I got the spot cleared on Saturday. Corey decided, I said, hey, do you want to go out and do some work? We've been, she's been staying home when I've been going out and working on the weekends because it's been hot and, and uh, just the dogs and a whole laundry list of things, reasons that, uh, that we don't want to go out there, both of us together and, and uh, leave the dogs here with air conditioning issues and power issues locally. And it, it's just, it's easier to not worry about it. But I said, you know, I could use your help. I could use your help putting this thing up. I think it'd probably go easier with two people. Turns out I probably could have got it done by myself. It would have been a bigger struggle. It took the two of us like two hours or so to put it together, maybe two and a half. I think um, now, like if we wanted to take it down and move it, it would be probably under two hours now that we know what we're doing. Um, and if it wasn't 90 and sunny and, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was hot because we cut all the trees down. We cut all the trees down for the cabin site and there was very little shade. Uh, we were very happy when we pulled the top onto this thing and we could crawl under it and have some shade. So it went up fast. Uh, the construction seems what, uh, seems good, um, for the price, for sure, for sure, for the price for 279 bucks. Uh, to get an enclosed 12 by 20 area, I think it was a it was a great deal. It was a great buy. Um, nice uh, solid pipe construction. I just have to assume they're aluminum pipes, uh, but yeah, the the click in pipes uh, with a little button they slide in the hole, click together. Uh, all the fittings, it it was pretty pretty universal. Like you you had six of one fitting and and a dozen of the same pipes and a dozen of the other pipes and those went together and it was pretty universal as it went around. <clears throat> like once we wrapped our head around what directions the fittings went and that the fittings had to go in the same um in the same 
uh, orientation. So there was only one way it went together. So the, the, um, the, the bowed out, I don't even know what the word, uh, the expanded ends or the, the smaller ends of the pipe that fit together. There was only one way they all went together. And then the fittings inside. Okay. I was wondering how stout are the tubes? They seem pretty solid. Um, the, the, the fittings seemed really, really solid. The tubes didn't seem bad. I think it will take a lot of abuse. I also think that it's a it's a it's a wind sail, and that was one thing that um, Hunter says. Can we still use male and female? Yeah, sure. Um, the the male, I guess, would be the smaller diameter, and the female pipe that it inserts into. And it just goes like this. And then you, you get her going real good. And there's a little button. And you, you spin it. And it pops in. And then it locks together like a dog. Um, Hunter says, I tried to use them at, uh, at a plumbing house. They gave me a funny look. It was a good joke. They, they busted your balls about it. Like they, they knew what they were talking about and, and, and played like they didn't, I suppose. Um, I think it's, I think it's sturdy. Uh, the, the thing they were lacking on was tie downs. And so I'm thinking about this and I, I'm, I'm hoping that what I did to secure it in the short term is going to be enough. Um, they sent the little, the little normal tent stakes, the little silver ones you get when you buy a, a, a pop-up tent at, at Walmart or something. There were three of those for each of the, each of the posts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight posts. So 24 of these little tiny stakes. The problem is the soil that we put it on top of is so fine. Um, and it's so, um, aerated it's it basically broken down forest floor for for years and years and years and years so basically i could push the stakes down in so really thinking about it if you can just push them in with your finger you can just pull them back out not a whole lot of um not a whole lot of force there so i put all those in um i'm going to have to take them out and adjust the poles like after we got it done i got it all staked down i stepped back and i looked at it and some of the poles are kind of wonky um and to find a 12 by 20 flat area where we're putting the cabin is is asking a lot so it, it kind of sits funny i'm trying to figure out what i want to do with it um they also sent these tie down stakes for ropes uh and they sent rope for each of the four corners to to kind of hold the top down and the frame down too uh like tent stakes going out and they sent these these stakes to go with it, and um, it was interesting. It was interesting. They had um, they had the big stake, and they were a little heavier duty, and probably ten inches long. And they had an eye bolt on the or an eye or a hole, a loop on the end of the bolt, like an eye bolt. And then it had this fin about three inches up on the on the spike. It had a fin, uh, a split fin like a auger. And I suppose you were supposed to you were supposed to get it into the ground, and then that was supposed to dig into the soil. <laughs> it did. It dug in. It just spun right in. And then I, I pulled on it to see how tight it was, and it just pulled right out of my soil. That's 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 what I got up. That's what I'm working with there. Uh, easy to dig in, not so great for securing things. So for this moment, uh, I was able to find some, some smaller tree trunks that I'd cut down. Hey, good morning, Jamie. How are we doing? Thanks for stopping. Um, I found some smaller tree trunks. I found some larger tree roots that I was, that were kind of exposed that i was able to dig under i was able to secure one of the ropes to um john palmer says mobile mobile home tie downs would hold it yeah um 
one of the features of it. So I was able to secure it to roots, uh, to to stumps that were there. I was able to pound one of those stakes into a stump and tie it off. I have it. I have it good for now. I think. I don't think it's going anywhere. One of the features it has is the um, the sides when they come down. They have an extra flap that goes out that um, that you're supposed to be able to use for sandbags. And looking at it after we got it up, I was I was pretty much thinking that um, the water when it rains was just going to kind of run through it. Like I said, it, it's really hard to find a level area in, in the spot like that big of a level area. And so where it looks like it's going to rain, it's going to kind of run as it'll run right through the bottom. And so i was starting to contemplate kind of like a ditch around the outside um maybe some sort of swell or i don't know i wasn't sure something to divert the water around the outside of it and then down the hill behind it and after i was looking at the 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 listing this morning when i was pulling it up it, it said it has this extra flap and i didn't happen to notice it yesterday all that much but i i i now that it is said it pip says a moat <laughs> probably not a moat but mm, kind of i don't want it to st stay full of water i just want it to divert the water but if i do it like a swell like i said the, the soil here is is so uh the soil right there is pretty easy to get through so i think with a with a pickaxe and a shovel i'd be able to dig a, a trench around this pretty easy and just flop all that dirt over on the edge of the of the um, the wall for a little bit more stabilization. And then, like John Palmer says, mobile home tie downs. I can go get some 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 decent stakes um, at uh, at Walmart. They have a they have a wide variety. You'd be surprised how many different stakes for uh, for tie down tents they have at at uh, Walmart or some other place. I could order them on Amazon. Whatever. Uh, I think I just need a little longer, a little heftier stake, and uh, we'll be able to tie it down. But it went up great. Uh, Corey was a huge help. She was. Uh, she read the instructions. She kind of muddled through them because they were um, IKEA instructions. No words on the whole thing. No words. Just twelve pictures. Um, and like I said, once we got rolling, once we figured out the once we figured out the direction of the fittings and and kind of laid out the pipes and started seeing things that went really fast. Um, Pip says something like hurricane anchors. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how significant they need to be between the the posts the anchors at the bottom of the posts because the posts have uh, have round feet on them with three holes in them. So you can anchor them right at the posts and then the four corners have tie down straps. So I'm trying to figure that out. Jamie's got a couple of the similar versions right at his place. So uh, I, I've been observing how he's, uh, how he's had his tied down. I know he's had his kind of fly away at points. And so I would like to, um, um, <laughs> hunter says what about the dog screwing things and I, I i thought about that i thought about that i could do the four of those i could do something similar to that um on the four corners i um yeah i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do really i have to be out there with a little bit of um with a little bit of breeze and see how um Off grid ping says, you know how windy it can get. It can get pretty windy there. Um, Corey and I were talking about that actually, but uh, it's not quite as windy as it would get in Minnesota. We were talking about if imagining putting one of these up in the backyard in our at our farm in Minnesota, and uh, how much we'd have to tie it down and uh, listen to the thing flapping in the breeze for sure. Um, and we were glad we didn't have to do that. Um, Mike's homestead says, so she was the brains behind the operation. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I just did what I was told and it works out. It works out well. Um, 
Jamie says, you know how windy it can get. My first one is I just anchored down on the bottom and it had a few. They and it went for a ride. My second one is tied down the trees and uh, tied down to the trees and the shed. Good morning, Elias GV. What's the question about? Hit that hit that like and the subscribe and you'll find out. <laughs> uh, so it's good. It's good. I, I think it's uh, I think it'll work well. It's it was the the next part of the process that gives us a place to bring material, um, bring material up and store it, um, store it before, um, before we use it, keep it out of the weather. Mike's homestead says, uh, Jamie saw the pond first thing this morning. Jamie, did you get a little help with your pond? I haven't seen any, uh, I haven't seen any videos or anything this morning. Did you, uh, did you get a little help, uh, some mechanical help with your pond? <laughs> I'll have, I'm, I'm coming out today. I'll, uh, I'll have to check it out. I got some stuff to take care of this morning and then I'll be out that way. <laughs> but that was kind of the weekend. And it worked really well. I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I I I would definitely give that shed a, a recommend a recommend buy for sure. And I didn't get it for free. <laughs> oh, you did. Nice, nice. Uh, probably went <laughs> getting that excavator in and doing that pond was probably a little quicker than um, than hand digging it, huh? Bubba, oh, Bubba brought the big boy shovel, the one that he was using on the property out behind us. That's uh, nice. That's nice. I am. I'm excited to see that, man. Are you putting liner in it? Are you, uh, what's the plan? We'll talk about it when I get there today. We'll talk about it when I get there today. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see it for sure. Um, so I didn't get this as a, as a product sample to do a video. I, I will definitely be doing videos about it. Um, K bonk, that's a fantastic idea. K bonk says, "What about log base on the carport?" I like it. I like it. I'll have to see how wide those um, those kickouts are on the on the bottom of the wall panels. And see if I can roll in, and I mean I can cut to length logs, and I have a variety of different sizes that uh, I have a couple still to drop. I have a, a variety of sizes that I still have to buck up. I only got, man, I only got, I only scratched the surface on on Saturday to get the the area cleared to put this up. I have a ton of trees down. And a few more to drop to to buck up to cut up, and I'll be able to um, I'd be able to size those. Man, I hadn't thought about that. I hadn't thought about it. Twenty five minutes on digging that pond. That's fantastic, man. I'm excited to come out and see it. I mean, I I think you're gonna be able to do a ton of fun stuff with that one. So, um, yeah, excited. I'm excited. I'll I'll be out a little later this morning, like I said. So, so that shed, I, I, I think, man, if you're in need and if you're in need of some, some shelter, some, uh, get your stuff out of the elements, it's not weather tight, uh, completely. I, I mean, it is, it should be. The corners are a little, the corners are a little open where they overlap. Uh, there's some stuff you could do to really, to really weather tighten it down. But it's uh, it's something to get out of the extreme conditions. I think getting a vehicle out of the rain is what it's intended for. But we're going to use it more um, multifunction for sure. With the windows and the doors on each side, it's not going to get super hot in there if we want to pop it open or even just leave the windows open with the screen and shut all the doors. You almost have like a, a party tent. Um, yeah, I I was impressed. I was I was very happy. Um. So that's the Lucky Berry heavy duty carport if you're looking for it on Amazon. Uh, another thing I worked on this weekend was my Raspberry Pi project for getting the live stream up 24/7, uh, and that's another thing I'm using ChatGPT for. I basically have walked through the steps 
talking it through with chat gpt and also claude um claude another ai that uh that that brian norton turned me on to um basically just asking it asking it questions and following up the answers it gives me with more questions asking it for uh, different different options for different price levels like budget option high price option what cameras to get what's what hardware i need for the raspberry pi and then as i got that done and got the material list and ordered it all and it all came in I've been asking it for instructions to give me instructions on how to do this. Uh, I've messed around with programming a little bit. I've messed around with um, things uh, over the years, but nothing. I can't say that I'm proficient. I'm definitely not proficient at the at the code or uh, the commands used with Raspberry Pi. Um, I am kind of familiar with networking through the gas pump stuff and and command line um, using a command line things like that. So this is all new to me. I'm, I'm vaguely familiar with it, but I'm a novice. At, 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 at most, I'm a novice. I've been able to use ChatGPT and Claude to walk me through ordering all the right components. Um, I was one short. I, uh, I was short an adapter, uh, one cable uh, to, to hook a monitor to it. Um, how to put it together, instructions to put it together, and instructions to start programming it instructions for um how to get the cameras the wise cameras i bought how to get them so that they don't use the wise app they actually just put off their own signal on the network i picked that up an rtsp live streaming uh protocol um and then i got jammed up uh i i, I ran into some problems it was yesterday after we got home from putting the tent up i was hot i was tired and um I was kind of in a hurry. I wanted to do some other things, and I think I uh, I think I messed some stuff up. But um, I have it functioning ish. I haven't been able to to get the the cameras up. Um, I'm having trouble with them connecting. But basically, I'm just going to go back through and, and start from the beginning with uh, with my instructions and go through them again. And and the the great part about ChatGPT is when I would have problems. I would just copy the error message or copy the the message that it was giving me or whatever. And it gave me troubleshooting advice. It gave me steps to follow. And so far, knock on wood, it's been it's been accurate. It's been able to walk me through any problems. It's been able to answer the questions like, um, hey, I am really fucking new at this and I don't know how to exit and save this. I don't know how to initialize this. What do I do? What do I do? How do I how do I complete step three on your instructions? And it would just go even more basic for me to figure it out. So if you guys want to learn how to do something, two times this morning I've taught you, I've taught myself uh, different things using AI. It doesn't have to rule your life. Hunter says. Are you using the version ChatGPT? Yes, just a downloaded app on my phone, um, and then also using the free version of Claude Three uh, from the Anthropot Anthropotic. Li um, yeah, what is the name of that? Sorry, guys. Uh, uh, not, not, uh, uh, at Claude.ai is uh, is is the site for the the other AI used besides ChatGPT. But yes, free version of ChatGPT. Just uh, downloaded it on my phone. Uh, it's a little chat app, and uh, you open it up and type what you want. There are limits to it. You can only do so many messages per hour or something like that. Uh, but you can save all your messages. You can store them, so you can do uh, like prep work. <laughs> you could like get information out and uh, and save it in the chat and then uh, start a new one when you're actually working on things for troubleshooting it's um it's opening up my eyes to how to use it to learn more effectively um new things you have to be careful about double checking it uh for accuracy and this and that but um man for this experiment it's working great 
And like I said on Friday, I, I know uh, a half a dozen people that I could I could send a message right now and be like, hey, um, help walk me through getting this live stream set up with a Raspberry Pi. And they'd have no problem doing it. They'd actually enjoy it. But um, I'm trying to do it solo with uh, with the help AI. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. And um, we'll see when I get some more time to work on it because uh, it's going to be a busy week. Got a busy week this week. And then we have visitors coming to town next week. And then uh, the following weekend, there's going to be somebody around. So we got we got a busy uh we got a busy little stretch here coming up, so I'll try to bang out things as much as possible. Uh, right now, the future of the the site out at, um, at out at Delinquents Gully, I have to drop, like I said, like four more trees. I have to buck up the rest of the trees. That's uh, that's happening before we do anything. Move on further. That's going to get all all uh, all chunked up and and stacked at least. Not cut, split, and stacked because I don't re I don't know what size wood stove we're gonna have. I wanted to I wanted to while I was running the saw cut everything to length. I don't know what wood stove we're gonna get, and I don't want to cut my stuff to sixteen inches and then have to not buy a wood stove we want because it's only got a fourteen inch firebox or a sixteen inch fire firebox and we it won't fit through the door. Uh, so I cut them to 36 inches. I cut everything up to 36 inches. I can, I can buck them down past that anytime. Uh, Hunter said that, uh, you know how many bowls I could turn out of that stuff? Dude, those would be some big bowls for sure. I think, um, I think a lot of those were, were 16, 18 inch plus diameter oak. <coughs> so yeah, you could, you could chill or turn a lot of fucking bowls out of them. And you're welcome to come up. So I have uh, I have more clearing, more trees uh, to clean up all the trees. The gutter project on the shed, um, getting the getting the carport secured and uh, drainage figured out around it. Have to clear up uh, where I cut out all the the foliage, all the raspberries, blackberries, and all of that in the in our build site, and uh, really shave that down. Um, pull out all the dead, um, pull out all the dead, uh, vines and, and, uh, raspberry. Like I sliced them up with the machete, but they're still all laying there. Now they're browned. And I'm trying to decide if I want to, 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 um, scrape up a lawnmower. Good morning, Jim. How we doing? Thanks for stopping. Appreciate it. Better late than never. Uh, if I'm trying, if I want to try to scrounge up a, a beater lawnmower to run through it, if I want to run the weed eater through it with maybe a blade and then a string and rake it, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. It's a lot of, um, it's a lot of biomass. And I think in a little bit, it's going to be a lot of brown biomass. And I have a lot of green, uh, that I have access to. So, I'm still contemplating that. I, I got a lot of work to do before I get to, to skimming that site. I mean, the, the, all the stuff that I told you that uh, I got going on, gutter project and, and the such. But then that's uh, that's about it. Um, <laughs> Off-Grid Pink says the brown, ones, uh, the brown ones still attack. They do. They do. And, and they almost attack more because they, they latch on and they've been cut. So they'll come with you. <laughs> At least the at least the green ones are attached to something and they snag your clothes and as you walk away they stay there. The problem with the brown the brown um, blackberry vines is they latch onto you and they and then they come with you and they get tangled up in your legs or your arms and yeah it's a it's a mess. So that's kind of them. Oh, that's the plan moving forward. Uh, one question before we get going and and Corey and I battled about this yesterday. And I've told you guys for a long time that I can't see colors very well. I'm not colorblind. Um, I can pass the colorblind test, you know, like the the dotty test that um, that they'll have like a number and there'll be different shades and dots and all that. Um, I pass them. Uh, the newer ones, like when we mess around with them on social media, you see them on TikTok or Facebook or Facebook or all that shit. 
I, um, I do okay. I pass, but not with, I don't get them all right by any means. So shades are kind of tough for me. Um, naming the shades are even tougher for me. Like, I don't know what it is, but, um, I'll see something and I'll say that's, uh, that's, that's fluorescent yellow. And Corey's like, no, that's fucking green. Um, I'll say that's blue. And she's like, no, that's black. Um, it's been a long time, been a long time since we've met and before. Uh, so we get the shed, we get the carport up yesterday and we're standing there and somehow I was like, yeah, it's something about being green. And she's like, that's not fucking green. There, there's no, there's no world that that's green. She's like, I could see maybe a blue gray um she's like it's black it's gray it's blue gray i said no it's fucking green that's forest green and i and i was just like yeah whatever you know like i know i know that i was probably wrong i know i was probably wrong um hey scramble and thanks for stopping in one take records appreciate you um I, I know I was I was likely wrong. Uh, so I took the picture that we had. I posted it in the Telegram group. And uh, I asked, what color is this? What color is, uh, what color is this? Good morning, Jim over in Noster. Appreciate you. Um, and lo and behold, K-Bonk to the rescue. First question, first answer unprovoked, un, uh, un, uh, prompted, no choices given, no nothing, swings home run with green. And I said, hey, Corey, <laughs> somebody else thinks it's green too. She goes, it must have been a guy. <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> and so then uh, it went on. I think, uh, I think we, um, John Palmer said it looked greenish gray to him. Uh, some of the other comments here was, uh, let's see, blue gray. Canadian Farmstead was on the on the line with Corey. K Bonk said green. Uh, and then this morning uh, or last night, uh, Brian Norton says uh, hunter green. Corey has a point. I think it was probably the way the sun was reflecting off it and all the green uh, foliage around it probably gives it a gray tint uh, or a green tint. Excuse me. The listing says it's gray. The company says it's gray. So I agree with my wife. It's probably gray. I kind of agree with my wife. It's probably gray. Um, it's dark. It is dark. I think it, it, I said, I said, well, it looks the same color as the shed. She goes, exactly. It's black. <laughs> What's that? What did you say? Oh, gray. It's gray. So I think of gray as, uh, I don't even have like this color. Light, lighter. Light gray. Oh, I guess that would be light gray. <laughs> I, I'm i so bad at colors. It drives her up the fucking wall. <laughs> but I mean, what am I supposed to do about it? Like, I suppose that we could have, uh, we could have kindergarten color time. But <laughs> just know, we just know not to make any color based decisions on, uh, on me. See, guys, I am so woke, I am colorblind. <laughs> I don't see color. I don't see color, race, or religion, or sexual orientation. Hunter says, my wife and I are opposite. I know all the shades. She doesn't. You know that's a, a uniquely feminine thing, right, Hunter? John Palmer says, like, that's the only thing about you that drives her up the wall. <laughs> Corey, I don't drive you up the wall, do I? 
She just kind of grumbled. <laughs> oh, Hunter says it's from working in a warehouse that sold ribbon and spray paint. I would not. I would have been fired real fast from there. I'd be like, who sent out the order of green ribbon? I'd be like, you mean that order of yellow stuff? <laughs> that was me. That was me. All right. I think I'm going to get out of here. I got some stuff to do. I got to, uh, I got a bunch of stuff to do around here and then out to work on Delinquent Scully, out to check out uh, Jamie's new pond that he got the big boy shovel to dig him out. Um, <laughs> Hunter, Hunter says, my wife says her favorite color is teal. It's not. It's actually sea foam, but she won't admit it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, get out and see Jamie's Pond. Do some, uh, I think I got some trail maintenance to do today. Get some things, uh, some stuff's growing in after a little bit of rain we have. Get it knocked down before the rain coming later this week from the from the tropical storm that's going to hit, uh, hit the Houston area and then make its way up and uh, we might catch the edge of it might go a little west of us might hit us i don't know i think i can't i can't believe that it could carry significant rain um like deluge rain by the time it, it goes across that much land mass but we'll see we'll see i haven't been i haven't been in tennessee for a for a hurricane yet <laughs> lots of tornadoes and thunderstorms but no hurricanes we will see we will see uh, back at it all, all week. This week we got uh, got four more shows coming up every Monday through Friday, six a.m. Central. I uh, I appreciate everybody listening and hanging out this morning. If you enjoyed the show, it's always free to hit that like and share along with the subscribe. To return value for value, please consider joining one of the YouTube membership tiers or listening on any value value for value platform like podverse or fountain.fm you can always join me over on noster every morning now too at zap.stream um or in your amethyst browser under the live tab the the link to join me on noster is in the show notes uh right there at the top uh you can find me at the lots or uh comfreyroots.com where you can pick up comfrey roots for uh for propagating a new little side hustle or uh, a variety of other things Guys, it's Monday. Hopefully you had a good weekend. You got a bunch of shit done and back at it for the week. Have a fantastic day, guys, and we'll catch up with you tomorrow.